Hey there, this is Mr. Wong, continuing our 2024 AP Computer Science AFRQ uh, challenge. So in the previous videos, I went over questions one, two, and three, and now we're going to go ahead and do question four. So question four, wow, that's seven pages. <laughs> question four. Now, to be honest, I've already kind of went through this with my students. This was the one they asked me to try and solve because they thought it was the hardest, apparently. So let's go ahead and go through it together. We have a path through a 2D array of integers where the path is based on the values of elements in the array. When an element of the 2D array is accessed, the first index is used to specify row, second column, so we have row major uh, thing. Uh, we have a class called location, represents a row and column position in 2D array. Now we have a grid path class that contains the 2D array, and that's called grid and methods to use to determine a path through the array. We have to write two methods, get next location and some path. So get next location. It returns a location object that represents the smaller of two neighbors of the grid element at row and column. We have some rules. Two neighbors are considered are the element below and the element to the right. So if I'm at row column, then below would be row plus one column. And the element to the right would be row column plus one. Uh, let me get rid of that. Whoops. If both neighbors exist, you return the smaller value. And you're guaranteed the neighbors will always have different values. If only one neighbor exists, then you return that location. All right, uh, so we're going to complete the get next location method. So uh, it is public location, get next location, public location, get next location, int row, int column. Okay, and what I need to do is look at this example. So if I look at zero, zero, it returns the neighbor to the right because if I compare 11 and three, three is less than 11, so it should return a location of zero, one. Location, zero, one. Okay, now if I pass in one, three, that would be this one. So compare 15 and 16. It should return the one below. So this is column plus one. So this is location row plus one column. If I pass in two, four, that's looking at this. I look here, but I cannot look here because um, that is going to be uh, out of bounds. If I try to find a value there, I'm going to get a array index out of bounds exception. So I just return the below. And if I do 4, 3, then I can't go down. I can go right. Okay. What about if it's 4, 4? Oh. So it can never call 4-4 four, four, as it would violate the precondition. So I don't have to worry about that. Okay. So I guess what I'm going to do is I need to check below and right to see if it exists first. Because I don't want to later find myself trying to see the value there if it doesn't exist. Because then I'm going to get that array index out of bounds exception. So I'm going to go ahead and create two variables. I'm going to call it right exists equals true. I'm going to assume it exists first and down exists. Let's just assume it exists. And then let's go ahead and check. So if the row that is passed in, or if the column that's passed in, right, because that's right, if the column that's passed in, is 
too large. So what does it mean for a column to be too large? So for this one, the column would be too large if it's um, four. If the column is four, then the row, then this does not exist right there. So if the column is greater or equal to, uh, what would it be? The length of this is five. So it would be length minus one. So if the column is four, then the right does not exist because there is no five. And to get four, I need to do length minus one. Okay, if the column is greater or equal to the uh, row dot length minus one, then the right does not exist. And do the same for row. If the row is same thing, down does not exist. Right, because we remember that we can represent a 2D array as a 1D array of 1D arrays. And this right here is grid dot length. And this would be grid zero dot length. Okay. Okay. So that is to determine if it exists. Now, if um, the right side exists, so I'm just going to leave a marker. This is to determine if something exists. Now I'm going to have my if conditions checking what value to return. If the right exists and the down does not exist, then I'm just going to return right, right? Return right. And this is just pseudo code for now. I'll replace this later. Else, if the right does not exist, but the left, uh, the down does exist, then I'm going to return whatever's down there. Now, if both of them exist, right, that's the only case I'd get to this else, then I need to compare the values in the grid. Else, I need to see if the value down there, so that would be grid. Uh, I'm going to do the down value. So row plus one is down. Is greater than grid, the right value. Um, if that's true... I'm going to uh, I'll just put on a different line. <laughs> uh, return right. Else, return. Wait, sorry. If the, yes, if the down value is greater than the right value, I want to re return right because I'm trying to return the smaller value. And return if else I want to return the down value. Now this right and down stuff that's not actual code. It's just pseudo code for now to help me um, kind of figure out the flow. This method requires me to return a location. So let's go ahead and look at the location class. So I, I need to construct a location object using this constructor and I need to pass it in a row and column. So right here, whenever it says return right, I don't want to 
return right per se. I want to return a new location. Um, and that should be two words. New location. I'm constructing an object. And I need to pass in the right location. So that's row and column plus one. Else, instead of returning down, I need to return a new location. That is row plus one and column. And let's go ahead and end that if condition, else condition. And I'll go ahead and edit this right now to uh, make these if else is accurate as well. So it's just going to be the same thing. This is going to return right. Return new location row column plus one. It's going to return down, which is return new location row plus one column. Wow. Okay. I think that's part A. Once again, if you really want to check, I would definitely make sure it matches this sample calls to get next location. Let's go ahead and go to part B. So part B, we're going to write a sum path method, which returns the sum. So I need to keep track of the sum. That's going to be an int probably. Of all values on our path and grid, the path begins with an element at row column and is determined by successive calls to get next location. I need to call that method. And I end when the element in the last row and last column of grid is reached. So that is the grid dot length minus one and grid row dot length minus one. All right. So until I reach the end, I'm going to keep calling get next location. All right. Let's get a shot. So this method is called public int sum path. And it takes in int row and int column. All right, so I know I need to keep track of some sum. Let's just create that right here. And I want to keep calling this method get next location until I reach the end. So in my mind, a while loop makes the most logical sense. So I want this to keep running until I reach the end. So the end is defined as the row being the grid dot length minus one and the column being the grid, um, well, we have rectangular arrays, but I'm just going to use row. Uh, the last one as well. So when I'm not there, I want this to keep running. So I'm going to put a not in front of all of that. So when I reach there, I want this to end. That's why I put the not in front of it. It's just easier to wrap my head around. So as long as this is not true, as long as I'm not at the end, I'm going to keep writing this code. I'm going to go first go to compute the sum of the current row and column. And then I need to get the next location. So I need to call this method that I wrote in part A called get next loc. And it returns a location object. So I'm just going to call it. I know it returns a location object, so I need to put location. Let's call it next. And it is, um, am I in the same method class? Yes, I'm writing some path. And the get next location method is in the same class grid path. So I can call the method by its name. So get next look. And that takes in a row and column. 
and it should return either the one down or the one to the right of me. Now I need to update my row and column because as you can see, that is what is going to stop my loop. So I need to update those values right now using the next location. So it's a location object. I see location objects have a git row and a git column. So I'm going to use those two methods to update my row and column. And I can't just do it directly because these are private right there. I have to use the public methods, different classes. So row is going to be equal to next dot get row. Column is equal to next dot get column. And then it's going to loop back up and it's going to check. Oh, are you at the end? No. Get the value, get the next location. Get a row and column. Oh, are you at the end? No. Get the next value, next location, row and column, until I reach the end. Now, this is where you have to be careful. Once you reach the end, you still have to sum up that last value. If we look here, we still have to add up that one at the last value. So I'm going to go ahead and add up that one. So I'm not going to code one. I'm just going to put the last value. And then I'm going to return an int because that's what it expects. Return sum. All right, that was question number four. Definitely think question four was one of the harder ones. Um, maybe not necessarily the sum path, but maybe this uh, get next location, those conditions. But hopefully you learned something from this and I had a fun time uh, doing these FRQ questions. All right, have a good day, y'all.